Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Bench's Book Reviews. What's in the box today? Oh, beautiful. It's a hardback. And it is Frog and Toad Storybook Treasury. Now, a couple of points. This is a storybook treasury. It contains, let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 20 stories. I'll be reading these as a kind of series, and this is the first one. And the other point is I'm wearing a dressing gown because I'm slightly under the weather. But don't let that perturb you. So let's go. If you don't know Frog and Toad, then you will soon. Lucky you. Uh, that's Frog. That's Toad, I believe. Maybe the other way around. We'll find out. Um, and they're best of friends, if you like. Um, the author, Arnold Lobel, uh, was famously gay. And there is very much love between this frog and this toad, and they're both male, so that's nice. And here we go, I'll just read the first one today, and then in other videos I will read other ones. Don't want to read the same one in every video. This is a, you can get these individuals, it's in, um, this is like a compilation of all of them, you can see. But they're in themes as well, so like frog and toad all year. I also have seen that as a separate book. Um, so here we go, and they're beautifully illustrated as well, and let's see. So the first section is called From Dota Friends, and the first story is Spring. Which you might have thought would be in the All Year section, but let's not worry about that now. Spring. Uh, we've just had the autumnal equinox, so it's actually not very topical reading this now. But you can always watch it again in six months' time. When the vernal equinox comes round. Spring. I guess it's about springtime and not about a, like a metal boingy thing. I think it is anyway. Spring. Frog. Uh, it's the first word of the book, so it's capitalised, but they also call them just frog and toad. I've read these before, that's why I'm so well informed. It's a very nice book as well, it even has like a little border here on the edges. And it's hardback, listen. Ah, here you go, it says on the back, contains four frog and toad books, so I'm calling them sections, but I think they are, or have been available as separate books. Possibly paperback then. But lighter. If you're just going on like a weekend trip, you might want to take a lighter book. Spring. We'll get to the story now. Frog ran up the path to Toad's house. One thing I should also mention is that they're typeset in quite short lines, like they don't rhyme necessarily or be poems, but it makes them quite easy to read for uh, young readers, all to read together, so I recommend them for that. There are Frog ran up the path to Toad's house. So you've got Frog and Toad straight in there, first story, two main characters introduced. They don't live together as uh, you can learn already from that sentence, because there's Toad's house and a frog is running there. Um, so they live separately. He knocked on the front door, mail. There was no answer. Yeah, they're, um, I mean, you can see on the front, they're animals, but they basically dress like humans, uh, jackets and trousers. And they live in a house like this. It's not like some sort of I don't know what kind of dwelling a traditional frog would do, but they, they basically they're anthropomorphized, I believe is the word. Kinda. Okay, frog ran up the path to Toad's house. He knocked on the front door. I could even do that with my hardback book. Couldn't do that with a paperback. There was no answer. Toad! Toad! shouted Frog. Wake up! It is spring! Blah! It's B-L-H, said a voice from inside the house. Toad! Toad! cried Frog. He shouted first, now he's crying, so there's more desperation in his voice. 
The sun is shining. The snow is melting. Wake up. He says wake up even though he's already heard the blah. But he was like get up. Wake up properly. I am not here. Said the voice. Oh, you can see here on the roof there's a bit of snow. But it's not covered in snow. So they're melting. So I guess Frog is reliable. Frog walked into the house. It was dark. All the shutters were closed. Toad, where are you? Called Frog. It's dark, so you can't see him. Don't know how good his frog sense of smell is. Oh, the frog does seem to be the green one, judging by the picture. Oh, sorry, there you go. See, because he's stumbling around the dark house. And here's the toad, the brown one in bed. Toad, where are you? Called Frog. Go away, said the voice from a corner of the room. Toad was lying in bed. So the bed's just in the corner, he's not like huddled in the corner. He had pulled, also male, all the covers over his head. That's also shown in the picture. Frog pushed Toad out of bed. He pushed him out of the house and onto the front porch. Toad blinked in the bright sun. Help, said Toad, I cannot see anything. That's interesting because Frog was in the dark house and actually couldn't really see. And now Toad is out in the bright sun and says he can't see him. So Toad is less reliable than Frog, I think. Don't be silly, said Frog. What you see is the clear warm light of April. That's when spring starts where they live. And it means that we can begin a whole new year together, Toad. Um, I guess they follow some sort of lunar calendar then. Maybe. If the new year, I mean, for them, the new year starts when, I don't actually know about frogs and toads' winter sleeping patterns, but it sounds like they hibernate through the winter, and that for them, the year starts when they wake up in April. And it means that we can begin a whole new year together, so that's very much this friendship theme. But frog doesn't want to start his year if toad's in bed. Toad seems... To have wanted to have been in bed for a bit longer, but let's see. Think of it, said Frog. We will skip through the meadows and run through the woods and swim in the river. In the evenings, we will sit right here on this front porch and count the stars. Uh, very presumptuous of Frog that he's just going to be like hanging out at Toad's house the whole time without being invited. You can count them, Frog, said Toad. I'll be too tired. I'm going back to bed. Not ready for the new year. Toad went back into the house. He got into the bed and pulled the covers over his head again. But Toad cried, Frog is crying again. I mean, I don't know, he's weeping. But he's a little upset. You will miss all the fun. Listen, Frog, said Toad. How long have I been asleep? You have been asleep since November, said Frog. So it sounds like that's their hibernation. November to April, what's that? Five months? Seems like a while. Well then, said Toad, a little more sleep will not hurt me. Come back again and wake me up at about half past May. Little joke there. Let me say half past with a time, half past May. I guess it just means mid-May. Good night, frog. It still says good night even though it's daytime. It just means I'm going to bed. But Toad, said frog, I'll be lonely until then. So you see earlier, it was like, you'll miss all the fun, but now it's becoming quite clear that Toad, that Frog won't enjoy himself an old Toad. Toad did not answer. He had fallen asleep. Frog looked at Toad's calendar. The November page was still on top. It'd say on one of these uh, page a month calendars. You can't really see it there on the... Sorry about that. Um... You can't really see the, the calendar very well in the video, but it's there. So the November page is on top. Frog tore off the November page, well, if it's April. That's wise. He tore off the December page and the January page, the February page and the March page. He came to the April page. Well, that's where he wants to be. Uh, nice attention to detail. They have actually got 30 days in April and November. I'm not going to work it out, but they have November starting on the Monday, and they have April starting on the 
Wednesday, if anyone does want to work that, I'll be my guest, if that's correct. Then April following and November would start two weekdays later. I guess you don't have to leave, yeah, so you have a bit of flexibility. There. Um, well, I mean, you could try to figure out the February. I think it is a leap year. I mean, it looks like the February starts on a Monday and the March on a Tuesday. Well, anyway, um, well, should we work it out then? November starts on a Monday. Which would mean that December should start on a Wednesday, 28th. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday. January should start on the Sunday. Sorry. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. February should start on the Tuesday. So March should start either on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Oh no, it's all over the place. I don't know then. Would have to look into this in more detail. Anyway, this is the exciting bit now, even though it's still April. Frog tore off the April page too. Getting a bit ahead of himself. Then Frog ran back to Toad's bed. Toad, Toad, wake up! It is May now! He's lying to him. What? said Toad. Can it be May so soon? He's right to question that. Yes! said Frog, lying again. Look at your calendar. Well, he's showing him evidence. Toad looked at the calendar. The May page was on top. Why, it is May, said Toad. He's been hoodwinked as he climbed out of bed. Then he and Frog ran outside to see how the world was looking in the spring. I don't know if you'll notice, uh, based on the different blossoms, that it isn't May. But in the end, I expect Toad will enjoy himself, hang out with Frog. And probably has had enough sleep, because that's the amount of sleep that toads need, I expect. So there you go, very nice one, spring. So ultimately, I think my reading is Frog deceives Toad for his own reason. He doesn't want to be lonely. But I don't think it's entirely selfish, because I think Toad will also, once he's woken up, enjoy himself too, as I think Toad also enjoys hanging out with Frog. So that's great. Tune in again for another of the Frog and Toad Storybook Treasury books, as I'm going to do a whole session now and read loads, but then put them out um, as individual videos. So take care, and see you next time for another of Mr. Bench's book reviews. Bye.